this is an article basically talking about um personal finances are fail. let's say personal finances and i think i've been thinking about it a bit to myself mostly because we've all been locked down and obviously in the beginning of this pandemic i was unemployed um i was just living off my savings and i was also thinking as well once i do get employed what am i going to do to make sure that i don't have this so this doesn't happen again i think a lot of people had that kind of awakening i know i did where i was like oh i can't i was lucky i had some savings that was great but i can't have be in a position where I'm down to my last, you know, a couple of hundred pounds after a few months only. I need to be able to have money that can last me for a real, real rainy day, which is a year, two years, or other businesses and stuff that I can do that can basically allow me to um, weather the storms of life, you know, whatever that means. And um, this article from grow.acorns.com is very insightful in terms of how people or how millennials, especially people like myself, view our future prospects so this is a, this is it on the screen it says 50 percent of millennials think they need three hundred thousand dollars or less to retire in comfort here's how much they actually need so maybe it's actually more i think it is more if i remember correctly reading the article it says here yeah, how much money uh, sorry how much are you going to need to retire whatever your answer there's a good chance you're lowballing it experts say according to a new survey from the trans america center again this is a mostly american sort of thing um retirement studies half of millennials born 1981 to 1986 believe that they'll need 300,000 or less in savings to retire comfortably a fraction of what most estimates say they'll actually need which is scary gen x is born between 1965 and 1980 and gen z is born 97 to 2012 had slightly higher estimates for their retirement needs the median guess for each group came in around 500,000 Boomers born between 1946 and 1964 had the highest median guess at 750,000, which makes sense since many of them are near retirement. The estimated retirement savings for all workers are on the low side, says Catherine, the CEO. How much different are the estimates? So how much do you need? Um, the rule of thumb is that you want an annual retirement income that's about 75% of your pre-retirement income, according to experts. Oof, that's a lot of money for people right so based on the gross retirement calculator the median millennial age 32 earning the median u.s household income 68,703 pounds or three dollars sorry would need to save 1.8 million in order to retire on three quarters of their income at age 67 1.8 million most of us haven't probably saved a hundred pounds, a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, two thousand, ten thousand. Most of us haven't seen ten thousand dollars just sitting in our account just like that. So imagine going to save one point eight million. And again, save, earn, whatever way you want to put it. Just imagine how hard that would be for people that are living paycheck to paycheck. It's insane, which makes which basically leads you to believe that. Most people I'd imagine, again, maybe I'm the exception because I've actually thought about this thing. Uh, I almost have an exception. Maybe I'm one of these people in a small group because I think the majority of people don't really think about this sort of stuff, I don't think. I think you have so many things to worry about day to day in terms of keeping the lights on and making sure your kids don't, you know, unalive themselves, right? You see these videos of people with their newborn babies and they're just running all over the place, trying to run into traffic. You're like, no, please stay alive. You have so many things to do. You have to look after your pets. Like, do you know what I mean? Like crazy stuff, right? I know people that get pets recently who didn't have pets before who have to completely change how they operate, how they kind of function in the world. They have to run home after work. They can't stay out for drinks and stuff because they have to go back and feed their pet. Like loads of things change in life. So imagine if it, just with a child. So it's really difficult to kind of, you know, it's really, I would say imagine with that being said, it's difficult to sit there and kind of imagine your retirement, right? Like where you're going to go, what you're going to wear, who you're going to be like, you don't think of that's, that's just, those are, those are la la land stuff. But for the ones that do think about it, 1.8 million is wild because I think I remember seeing an interview. I've, actually, I want to feature it maybe in the next podcast. There's an interview recently out with this um, lady called Julia Fox, who obviously is the new muse or girlfriend of Kanye West, an actress who appeared in Uncut Gems, right? And I think she mentions in this interview something along the lines of um, just being grateful for having the opportunity to obviously make art and be successful and during, given what's happening in the world and given that she was a former sex worker and not all sex workers have a chance to reinvent themselves whatever she was being really grateful and kind of um um for her position but i remember her saying something in an interview along the lines of um she never held a thousand pound in her hand like cash money and i think that kind of changed how she kind of thought about her life like she wanted more of that like she never had she had the opportunity to earn that much and i remember having the same thing where i was working retail for majority of my career of my life 
And then I went to my first kind of office job and I got a thousand pounds, a thousand one hundred pounds in my account. And I remember just looking at it thinking, whoa, because I remember working full time once in retail and then checking my bank. And I think that was, you know, when you don't do your tax thing right and they take too much or maybe it's when you do your when you get your first roll after maybe the tax year, I forgot how it works out, but you sometimes get a big chunk of tax taken out of your income when you first start a new job and sometimes you know most of the time you get it back anyway but it's the first hit can hurt because usually if you're looking for a job it means you don't have any money and then when you get the job you're you're eagerly anticipating that first paycheck right you're just sweating your balls off so i remember when i got that first paycheck for my first retail job working semi full time i'll say it's like four days a week i say i'll say full time for four days a week I, I, illegal at that time because i was underage but you know we made it work i remember working all those days and then checking my account and i had something like i'm not going to lie 428 pounds or something and figured to myself what the fuck and i remember loads of those days included closes so i was sometimes opening and closing sometimes i was closing all the time which obviously meant you were there until like 11 10 p.m it feels like retail, especially sometimes maybe later if it was in a department store somewhere and i looked at my account and it was somewhere in the 400 mark I remember thinking to myself, oh my God, I cannot do this anymore. And I think that might be one of these times where I kind of decided, you know what, I have to make something of myself outside of a nine to five so that I don't have to rely on a paycheck because this isn't enough. Like this is not enough. <laughs> and this is before I developed my taste for expensive clothes and fancy holidays. This is back then. This is back in the day when I was happy with just a couple of chicken wings and some chips and I was already knew it wasn't enough. So imagine if you're just working to live, live into work, whatever, and someone tells you you need 1.8 million to retire. You're like, I don't give a shit about retiring. I should like, be able to go to a couple of festivals, buy my girlfriend a, a Valentine's gift and keep it moving. That's all I want. And um, I, I'd imagine that'd be the case, but especially considering what the job market is at the moment, 1.8 million is wild. But the good thing is there are some good YouTubers about it. I've got who the guy is now. I do follow him online. He's got a video I just checked out recently. I think it got recommended my algorithm, maybe because I've been reading this article, but it's weird. It was this um, video that basically says how to go from zero to a hundred thousand net worth, right? And it, of course, it's mostly American based, but I think if I'm not mistaken, what his main tips in that video about how to basically increase your earning potential were obviously to live below your means, um, improve your credit score, consolidate your debt, invest your money that you save. Um, into uh, like you know stocks and bonds and whatnot ISIS not gimmicky stuff like crypto and nfts but stuff that's actually tried and true and then i think the other thing is have some sort of side income and i think he had a thing called house hacking which looks like you buy properties and then you basically rent the rooms out it's what it looks like i don't know if it's something else but from what i could ascertain from the video it just means that you buy properties obviously which you, if you improve your credit score it allows you to get mortgages and stuff and then you kind of rent those rooms out which allows you to have um a consistent revenue stream that isn't your employment but yeah he mentioned of course getting a steady job too which is great to see because I've been arguing this a lot with my, a lot of my creative friends because a lot of my creative friends have a different way to kind of approach the whole how do you chase your dreams thing while you have a full-time job. I've always been under the, I've always had the idea or my methodology has always been I want to have a full-time job that then allows me to earn money so that I can put that into the things I want to do. Like, you know, whatever hobbies I'm into, whatever I want to put, that's what I want to do. Full-time job, you get the money and you put that into your dreams. And then you you, you do them co con concurrently, right? You do it at the same time. But some of my friends have this idea where they're like, they'd rather work for six months, save that money, you know, work for six months and do absolutely nothing, like live like a rat and just save the majority of their cash and then use, and in the next six months and then quit and the next six months, use that money to then pursue their dreams in the hope that, you can basically make it happen in six months. Do you know what I mean? And if you don't, you just get another job again. But I think even back then, when even though I'm, you know, notorious for jumping around from jobs to jobs, I don't really care. I've always, I'm also conscious that just starting something and then ending in six months is a little bit OTT. You should maybe stay for a year, at least minimum, just so you can build yourself up. And also I think for me personally, having the constrict, having constraints, like having my time limited allows me to be more productive. So if I know I have to be at work from nine to five, it means that my evenings, I don't have any other excuses, but to do the things I want to do to kind of get me out of the employment, do you understand? Whereas if I had the free day, I think I wouldn't probably get anything done. But because I know I finish at five or six, that gives me a couple of hours to go practice this or to go write this or whatever it may be that I want to do until I go to bed and then do it again the next day in the hope that something catches, it's hope that something 
picks up and kicks off and who knows and then suddenly i have to hand him a notice but i think everyone's got a different idea of how they approach things but damn that's a lot of money man to retire 1.8 million dollars jesus um and it continues here don't estimate um your retirement needs by guessing it says one of the surprises in a trans-american researchers would survey 100,000 people at the end of november 2020 was the number of people who estimate their retirement needs simply by guessing more than 40 percent of respondents said that it was how they landed on the answer they gave only a quarter said that they used retirement calculators to fill out the worksheet there's a lot of financial illiteracy 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 i know that i've got it because i can't even say the word um because i grew up in you know a house where we didn't have a lot of money we were basically you know on the on the bread line for the most part and i know the value of a dollar but also i'm kind of i've got that poverty thing where i'm afraid of not earning anything so you know it's weird it's a weird thought it's a weird sort of thing you kind of go through when you kind of grow up semi-poor I'm not saying poor, poor because people had it that worse, worse position in my I was, but it, you know, life wasn't always great. Sometimes you, you know, you go a few Christmases without any gifts whatsoever. So, you know, you quickly sobered up and realized you have to start earning money. But I think when you do then start earning money, life takes over. Life's like I said, life's needs. You have to look after your family. Maybe you have an unexpected child. Maybe you move to a certain country. Like you, life just catches up with you. You don't really want to. You don't really have dreams anymore. You're just functioning. And then the, I think one of the great things that kind of happens is that sometimes I think it's a way to say, because obviously I have delusions of grandeur. I think there is something quite beautiful about accepting, not accepting your position, but accepting where you're at and just trying to make the most of it or trying to make the best of it. So being like, Hey, even though I'm not working this crappy job, like I remember when I start after my first couple of crap jobs, I then decided to do this thing where it doesn't matter if I was working for two pound an hour or six pound an hour, I'd ensure that I would had something to show for that role. So if I if I was to work a job, I'd make sure I'd go and buy a nice pair of shoes. I'd buy maybe a computer. I'd maybe buy I don't know something I needed, a phone, whatever it may be. So that eventually, so that even if I had to leave or that job was no more, I could have something to show for it. Like oh okay, at least I have one of these things that's good. Again, if you imagine, I go for a job and I work there and I buy myself a laptop. The laptop's gonna be amazing because if I end up leaving or if I end up you know not being there anymore so if i end up leaving or they fire me or something at least i've got a laptop that's allowed me then to go and apply for other roles because i don't have to go into the internet cafe and apply that way because i've done that before and that's you know that's a that's a real humbling time when you go into the internet cafe having to send off cvs so i think that's sometimes a good thing that's kind of overlooked so i don't think everyone needs to know this no one needs i mean no one needs to feel inadequate that they're not they don't have these lofty dreams of retiring or being a millionaire or being fair. Like sometimes just being able to look after your family, look after yourself, um, do the things that you enjoy is enough. And that is maybe the definition of a, of a good life. Do you know what I mean? Knowing your position or knowing your place in life and trying to make the best of it as opposed to tracing this dragon that doesn't really exist. Because let's think about it. Like how many people in the world really get to hold a hundred thousand pounds or even one point million? Or how many get the chance to even earn sometimes a hundred you know a thousand pounds in their lifetime let alone have 1.8 million in a bank that they can say they can retire on it's not a lot do you know what i mean so this idea that everyone can do it i've always hated because i think it puts unfair pressure on people um because i think the people that want to make it will help end up making it the ones that don't need to don't shouldn't feel bad about doing it, which is why i've always hated that kind of Joe Rogan, everyone can do this. Everyone can start a flipping business, selling knives and making wooden furniture. And this idea that Gary Vee has that everyone's an entrepreneur. No, they're not. Like some people just want to pay their bills and put their kid through school, you know, find, fall in love. Like that's all they want. And I think that's perfectly fine. But yeah, the the amount is quite shocking. Um, but I would like to know from people listening and reading or listening to this podcast or watching, have you ever thought, about oh yeah that's a super saver right the fire right have you ever thought about um retirement is that something that's on the cards for you do you care is there other things that you're concentrating on i'd love to know in the comments let me know man um do you have an age that you want to retire or are you just trying to make the best of the situation you have available pay your bills go on a couple holidays a year if that and just kind of live the best life that you can live let me know in the comments down below i'd love to know your thoughts on that one